Welcome to Unit 5 of EDSE 510. You'll notice on your course schedule document that this is a two-week unit. There is one main focus grade-wise or point-wise for this unit, and that is the interview assignment. We've talked about it a bit before, and we'll be diving into it more in this video. We don't have a discussion in this unit because we want to set aside time to pull together interview content, make sure that that interview is completed, and then to describe the results of that interview and to complete your write-up. So the interview assignment will be the focus for this two-week unit. In addition, the content that we will cover addresses FAPE and LRE. These are popular, perhaps some of the most popular acronyms in special education. FAPE being free and appropriate public education and LRE being the least restrictive environment. So special education law is built on the foundation that every student is entitled to a free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. And understanding what appropriate means is something that we go through with evaluation and with determining present levels of performance and functioning and what the student needs in order to succeed to the maximum extent with peers across settings. So again, the focus of this unit uh, would be that interview assignment. We do have the You Be the Judge assignment coming up. So since we have this extra time for a two-week unit, this is a great opportunity to dive into that as well if you find yourself with some time on your hands. Um, so we can see on the course schedule, unit six, we have You Be the Judge. And that is an assignment where you'll be presented with a case and you'll have to make a ruling. So it is a legal focus in that assignment. Big focus on case law and statutory law. And then moving into the topic of FAPE, free appropriate public education that we just addressed, you will find case law here. This is the Hirsch and Johansson article. And that will provide us with information on FAPE with case law, and particularly um, with the Rowley case that went to the Supreme Court. And from this case came what we call the Rowley test. And those two questions have to help us as we figure out whether there has been compliance in special education. It's highlighted here on the first page of this article. The Rowley test asks, has the state complied with procedures set forth in the act? And so that would be related to special education law, right? Are we in compliance? And then is the resulting IEP from that law reasonably calculated to enable the child to receive educational benefit? So are we providing that free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment? This would be the case for a student with mild to moderate needs who might just be um, lightly impacted by a learning disability and just needs some support and accommodation, some intervention, and then this would go all the way to a student in significant support needs programming, maybe a student who is not verbal, maybe a student who is uh, placed in the least restrictive environment, identified as an outside school or an out-of-district placement. So any person in the school system with any level of need, all the way from one end of the spectrum to the other, we have to ask these questions to understand if we are in line with what we need to be doing as a school system, as an entity, and that is, have we been in compliance, and is the IEP reasonable for the child to receive educational benefit? We always want the answers to that question to be yes, uh, to both of those questions. And then FAPE, free and appropriate public education for significant needs population. So we do have two articles here, and this would be for students with significant support needs who might be participating with alternate standards and assessments. Uh, so do take the time to look over those articles because that can be a little bit of a complex situation, especially if you're working working or typically used to working with um, the regular state standards. Here is a link regarding least restrictive environment and this is kind of fun. Please check it out. Um, there are some online modules that you can review here with the Colorado Department of Education and that would be regarding least restrictive environment with information on service delivery. So this is in the um, the platform that CDE calls Moodle, and you can go through each of these for interactive modules. 
you can click the enter button and it will load up for you an interactive module regarding least restrictive environment. And what we mean when we say least restrictive environment is that the student is placed in the setting in which he or she can learn the most and have the most educational access along with maximizing the access to general education curriculum content and to peers. So the most inclusive option possible where the student can still receive educational benefit. And as mentioned before, this might look like anything from full placement in general education classes all the way to a student who might be placed out of district because the results of any a comprehensive evaluation with the multidisciplinary team have indicated that that out of district placement is in fact the least restrictive environment in which this student with his or her needs can receive a free and appropriate public education. And that's a small percentage of students, of course, but it does happen. So remember, least restrictive environment, some may say, oh, that means general education. And Oftentimes it does to some extent or another, but it's not always general education. That's why center-based programs such as effective needs or serious emotional disability along with significant support needs programs, that's why those exist, right? And those might uh, be housed, they're housed within a neighborhood school, then students do have access to the general population either for part of the day or all of the day. Um, but students may also be in a separate setting. So it really just depends, as always, upon that student and the needs of that student. So that is the CDE website to review. And then here we're talking about interventions and strategies. So positive behavior interventions and supports can be related to least restrictive environment. So it, with fidelity of implementation, of implementation of PBIS practices that can connect closely to our multi-tiered system of supports, making sure that we're making the least restrictive environment work for every student every day. And another very important website that you might be familiar with is called imdetermined.org. And this website provides us with an enormous amount of information regarding special education and self-determination. So youth with disabilities, how are they over time and as they grow older and develop, how are they taking ownership of their own learning and ultimately planning for and engaging in their future, identifying their own interests and avoiding any of that learned helplessness providing students with opportunities every day and every hour to take that ownership and to grow in a supported manner. This is actually a really helpful website for families and for youth themselves as well. So resources, obviously there are some videos, great things to review here. There are some social media accounts for Undetermined as well. Self-determination is a big part of the least restrictive environment, allowing the student to engage, and part of that might be attending part or all of the IEP meeting. This is the Parent Center on Transition and Employment, and this is another article regarding self-determination, particularly for students as they get older and are looking at post-secondary goals. There is a PowerPoint here regarding free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. It is easy to throw these acronyms around, of course, just as it is for all acronyms um, in the field of special education, but it's very important that we avoid this because families often are not familiar with these. So please take the time to break them down, as always, when you're talking with families and even with other providers. A general education teacher might not be familiar. That might not be covered thoroughly for them in their daily work. And so the, the term FAPE might seem kind of strange to somebody who's not as familiar with it. So keep that in mind as we learn these new acronyms or work on them if you're familiar with them already. This slideshow has a focus on universal design for learning and inclusion. So information provided regarding a case study and um, the general education curriculum for all students with disabilities and the value for accommodation. There are some examples of accommodation and that could be related particularly to assessment. So take the time to look over those as well. We have hit a lot on assessment uh, previously, but it's important to still look through avoiding bias and that continued reform within the educational system. Some other optional materials for you to review 
and these are from the Department of Education. Pretty interesting information. And remember, you do have two weeks to review this, so more information regarding students with significant support needs. A very interesting topic is um, here for the electives. I personally love this because um, you've got students across settings and it's a very valuable to gather that information for art and for music and physical education and all those things that we might not immediately take into consideration when we're thinking about academic access. We might think reading, writing, and math, but really it's that big picture. So here, as we discussed, is the interview assignment. This will be your big focus. So we have a couple main ideas here. You did have a discussion board previously where you were looking at interview questions and kind of honing in on those. You want to make sure that those are ready to go. And if you've not done your interview yet, that you get it scheduled as soon as possible. An important reminder here is that there's not a particular length requirement for the interview. You really want this to be conversational. You don't want it to be rigid and formal. Um, that's the best way for you to gather information is to really encourage openness with your participant. You don't want to interview a person in your own family, um, but instead this is going to be either a caregiver and that would be a family member of the student with exceptionalities or the student him or herself. So don't interview a teacher, don't interview a paraeducator. That would be a different kind of an assignment. This is really looking at the family side or the perspective of the student themselves. And that can be really interesting to gather. So again, if you've had trouble contacting somebody, feel free to reach out to me and let me know that. But I have had a lot of people who've had luck either contacting local schools and asking about contacts who might be interested in engaging in something like this and passing their information along to be distributed to families as appropriate. Or I actually have had some people who have posted on social media and said, hey, I'm doing an assignment. This is a person that I need to talk to. Would anybody be aware of somebody who might be willing to take my information or does anybody want to participate who would be eligible for this? And uh, you're not required to do that, of course, but I have seen it work for some people in a pinch. So for this interview, you have created the protocol. That would be the questions. You will do this. Uh, be sure that you get the signature on the consent form and you will be making an audio recording so that you can make sure that you're referencing quotes correctly as you do your write-up. So um, the consent form is attached down here and um, you'll see several other helpful documents here. But really this is the main assignment description and you'll want to include all of this as you go. Um, the outline is something that will be quite detailed. You'll write about what you heard in the interview. That's point number two here. And then the reflection for this will be five pages. So in your questions, again, as we've talked about before, the really important part, whatever you ask them, you can ask whatever you think would be interesting, but please hit on the legal cultural and ethical issues. And when we say legal, obviously we know what that means. We're looking at compliance, ethical, what are best practices for students in the school setting and um, thinking about the really that ethics-based side of working with people with disabilities. But cultural, this could be the culture of the classroom, inc inclusive culture. It could be the culture of a particular population. For instance, some people have shared some really interesting information about culture of people who are deaf or hard of hearing and um, culture of families working together for youth or students who have autism. And some of that can be really interesting to talk with families about or with the student themselves. Um, so please do hit on all three of these. Your outline will be detailed and that'll be just kind of bullets or numbers to include important quotes and ideas from the interview. And then there'll be this five page reflective paper. And you will want at least four separate source citations to support your statements, at least two separate sources. Um, the rubric is down below here. And then please include headings that outline legal, cultural, ethical, etc all of the pieces described in the rubric. And again, in the reflection, detail and examples. So review all of this in the prompt. Make sure that we're using people first language. And then here are the various sections that must be included. So let me know if you've got questions. The rubric is your best resource. And I'm looking forward to reviewing your assignments. Have a great unit.